Abrupt climate change is the stuff we don't expect that we expect. If we keep burning fossil fuels, we keep turning up the Earth's thermostat, it gets warmer. And on average, we expect it to warm. And so you'll see all these curves of smooth warming. And if we look at the history of Earth's climate, what we never see is this. What we see is this. And so the surprising things, the abrupt things, are of great interest. The Earth system is full of um, components that can respond very abruptly. Abrupt climate change is not just an abrupt change in climate itself, uh, but slowly changing climate can push um, systems, including human systems and ecological systems, past thresholds themselves. And it is possible that you push something very gradually and suddenly it hits stuff that we care about. Either the storm surge is just below the levee in New Orleans and people living in New Orleans go about their business, or it's just above the levee in New Orleans and people in New Orleans are very, very unhappy about that. And a very gradual change in sea level, if we don't respond to it, can lead to an abrupt change with the water is in the city or it's in the subways of New York or what have you. And we have a lot of things that we've built that may be vulnerable to a gradual change pushing them over a threshold and causing an abrupt issue for us. In Miami, everyone can see this now. If you've been here, well, yesterday, and if you're here today, and you go to West Avenue on Miami Beach, you're gonna see water coming out of Biscayne Bay, up the storm sewers, and onto the streets until it's about a foot deep. And that's not fresh water, that's salt water. There's no rain, there's not a cloud in the sky. Everyone can see that. Some people go, oh, we broke a sewer main, or a water main broke. That's not what it is. That's sea level rise. This is the main route between South Devon and into Cornwall. But just look, the groundworks that supported the line have been completely washed away by the tide. Just leaving the track there suspended, hanging in the air, like some kind of theme park ride. People talk about Katrina as the last major hurricane that hit the United States in 2005. Well, Sandy technically wasn't a major hurricane, but the damage was a major hurricane. I don't think people care whether the wind speed was this mile per hour, that mile per hour. What they care about is, oh my God, this thing just destroyed my home, and it wasn't a major hurricane. How does this happen? So I think with climate change, we've got to put an asterisk on these storms now, because now storms that technically aren't major hurricanes are causing major hurricane damage, and sea level rise is a big part of that. The last time it was two to three degrees Celsius warmer than it is now. Sea level was about 25 meters higher. That's 80 feet. The Greenland ice sheet is actually quite vulnerable to collapse. We've always thought, if you go back 10, 15 years ago, most scientists thought the Greenland ice sheet was quite stable. But what we're seeing now today, and uh, scientists studying the Greenland ice sheet are seeing rapid retreat rates in many of the, uh, the tidewater glaciers. Actually, the Greenland ice sheet is deglaciating, it's retreating, it's drawing down the interior of the ice sheet faster than the models assume. The scientific community keeps getting surprised by how sensitive the response is of the cryosphere. That's the snow and the ice. In fact, the last time that ice sheets uh, disintegrated, 14,000 years ago, sea level went up 20 meters in 400 years. So that's one meter every 20 years five meters a century, and that would be incredibly disastrous. Do we need to worry about 60 feet of sea level right away? No, but even a rise of, of even a meter or three, three or four feet, and in, in, by the time my children are grandparents, um, that's a very short period of time. We're looking at a meter to two meters of sea level rise, or maybe uh, four to six feet of sea level rise. That is dramatically uh, important to how we manage our coastline. Climate system is a pretty dangerous, dangerous beast, right? So you don't want to poke the sleeping dragon too much. Um, it's not just a question of beach houses. It's a question of sewage treatment plants. It's, it's a question of uh, folks in poor neighborhoods who can't afford 
to move out of low-lying areas because of sea level rise, who can't afford to move out of, um, who farmers who can't afford to pay the higher electrical cost to pump that water out of the ground. This is about our surviving on the planet. Is it possible that we have overestimated the dangers? Is it possible to be a little better? Sure. Is it possible to be a little worse? Sure. Is it possible that CO2 breaks things that we really care about and things are a lot worse than we expect? Yes, it is. What's emerging is how wildlife has suffered in this winter of storms. This is worse than anything we've ever seen before. This impact of this tidal surge it was the highest ever recorded in many parts. And, and the impact to these wildlife sites is, in some cases, devastating. The big worry is what this means for the famous bird life here. Some birds can adapt, but others rely on the food chain provided by fresh water. It's not just about losing some invisible insects, it's about potentially losing the, the base of a pyramid that includes all the other species as well. And so when we look at climate change, best estimate, a little better, a little worse, a lot worse. The uncertainties are mostly on the bad side. What we're learning from the data is that uh, there are going to be some pretty nasty surprises in place for us in the, in the centuries ahead.